Hi everyone, this is Mark Beggert. And Leslie Beggert. And we are the co-founders of Fabulingua. And we are on a walk this afternoon, Sunday in Austin, Texas. And we thought we would take this opportunity to tell you about the origin story of Fabulingua and why Fabulingua exists. And really that story is Leslie's story. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and we're gonna hear from Leslie. Hi, I'm Leslie Omana Beggert, uh, co-founder of Fabulingua. And today what I really wanted to talk about was languages and how they were part of my background and I wanted to make sure that they were part of my children's background. So basically I grew up in a bilingual environment. I grew up in Barcelona, Spain, uh, in an English-speaking household. My mother was actually Norwegian and she spoke about seven different languages and my dad's family was from Venezuela and we would go back for the summers to see my grandmother and cousins and so Spanish was very much out you know outside our main family home it was around everywhere friends and school and everything in the home we spoke English and I also when I was in kindergarten went to a uh, French kindergarten so that was like the beginning um, with those three different languages. And then when I was about 13, I moved to England uh, and later on went to, went, well, I went to school in England and London and then went on to Oxford to do psychology and philosophy and then to Cambridge uh, to do my master's in social anthropology. And through all of that time, I was really interested in anthropological type expeditions. I'd always managed to concoct uh, some expedition to some random part of the world and raise money for it and go out with a team and study some project or another. And I found myself in the position of translator um, unexpectedly. Um, and um, I started developing some skills in simultaneous translation that I, that it, I, little did I know, would end up being kind of part of the DNA of Fabulingua and why I even came to do Fabulingua. Um, and then the other ways that, that, that languages were part of my life is that so the French that I'd mentioned that I'd done in kindergarten, well, it turned out that that one year in kindergarten really gave me a leg up in uh, high school when I went on to like properly study French um, the way a lot of British kids do. Um, it turned out that I had a facility for it that was way beyond what I would have had had I not had that kindergarten year in French. Uh, so much so that in actual fact, you know, when I went on to work at a French company, I think that really helped me because they just had to throw some more French lessons my way and I was actually ready to be presenting to head office in French. Um, whereas um, that wasn't necessarily the comfort level that everyone else uh, had with their French. And so that was really helpful and I felt like it opened a lot of doors and created opportunities in that French company. Um, other like experiences with languages was when I uh, met Mark, my husband and co-founder. We moved to Shanghai together, to China in the early 2000s, and uh, I just totally threw myself into learning Mandarin, and that created some really cool opportunities because having learned Mandarin, I was able to then uh, go and study sculpture at a Shanghainese university with some Chinese sculpture teachers in Mandarin uh, and that was a unique life experience. Uh, I did that for a couple of years um, and they were amazing teachers, amazing sculptors and again something I wouldn't have had without languages. And then, um, and then Mark and I when we left uh, Shanghai we moved over to um, uh, Argentina and there uh, used a different language um, to again kind of really make the most out of my experience there. Uh, we bought various uh, property and totally renovated it and did everything from speaking to uh, you know builders and architects and everything to way too many lawyers and uh, had like an eight-year business there in real estate uh, which was really successful and just really really local. Um, so all of these were really unique uh, and great experiences and all of them came about from having languages uh, under my belt so you know when I was pregnant with my kids I was like with my older child I was like I want to really make sure that, that this is part of their life too uh, that just because they're raised in the United States they they don't have to be raised with just one language uh, so that was kind of the genesis for the philosophy behind Fabulingua.